Today we're here very excited to announce the Commonwealth of Massachusetts's capital investment plan for fiscal years 2024 to 2028, which includes an elevated focus and new investment in affordable housing. Uh, this is a big deal. <laughs> Uh, this is a, this is a, I know, such an important issue uh, for so many across the Cape and so many who are here uh, today with us are working very, very hard on these issues and, you know, it, it's why we wanted to come very intentionally uh, to the Cape uh, to have this conversation, make this announcement about our capital investment plan, but importantly, highlight the focus on the investment that we need to make in housing in our state. Uh, in order to get to this point, I, I want to recognize the people that worked uh, to make that possible. I'll start with our Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matthew Gorkowitz, who is here with me, along with members of his team, including Caitlin Connors, our, our Assistant Secretary for Capital, Timor Yantar, who is our Capital Budget Director, and many members of ANF um, who've helped really uh, take in all the policy considerations and requests and think about how we as an administration can put forward a capital investment plan that really meets the needs of people across this state. So I want to thank you, Team ANF, for your great, great work. I <laughs> I also want to thank our new secretary, our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus, who you'll hear from shortly, and his team. We're very excited about his position, uh, which is really something that the Lieutenant Governor, who sends her regards and is no stranger uh, to, to the Cape and Islands, we were very intentional about wanting to create this, this new secretariat so that we would have somebody who had a team singularly focused on driving housing production around this state at all levels across all realms using existing and new and innovative approaches to incenting and supporting the kind of development um, and rehabilitation and preservation that we need to house folks here. We also, of course, are grateful to our partners from the legislature. Uh, folks here are so, so incredibly well represented by the men and women who serve uh, in the State House, who, whose work benefits not only the people in their districts, but really people all across Massachusetts. And I've been grateful in particular for their partnership in the first six months of this, uh, of this new administration. And we start with our Senator, Julian Sear. Uh, we also have, we also have, <laughs> And I'm going to list everyone. We have Representative Kip Diggs, Representative Chris Flanagan, Representative Steve Exaros. We have Representative Sarah Peak. At some point, I know we'll be connecting with Representative Dylan Fernandez as well. Um, but I just want to say thank you very much for all the work that you do. We have so many local officials here. Barnstable Town uh, Manager Mark Ells is here. I know we have so many also uh, select board folks and, and members of, of uh, town committees uh, representing. I think we have Barnstable, Orleans, Provincetown. Who have I missed? Mashpee. Mashpee. Okay, just to name a few. And I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, we got Leslie. I um, I just say uh, thank you very much for everything that you do because a lot of the rubber meets the road right in our, our local communities. And I know the job that those particular jobs are incredibly, incredibly um, uh, challenging. And so we are grateful for the partnership, not only with our, our state delegation, but also with our local delegation uh, on housing and so many, so many other matters moving forward. Um, advocates, I, I also want to thank who are part of our housing working group have joined us today, including housing assistance. So we have a lot to say about housing in just a moment, but let me just start by outlining this capital investment plan, uh, which we will be filing, uh, colleagues in the legislature, shortly. But just a preview, it's a five-year, $14 million investment, and it focuses on a few things. One, meeting the climate challenge facing our communities, creating good jobs through statewide economic development, helping people live, more people live, um, affordably 
helping them uh, work and live and raise families in our state. Uh, there's specifically $840 million for modern climate resilient state college and university campuses, a $421 million upgrade to IT, uh, which is actually really, really important in terms of our ability to effectively, you know, deliver service that's going to upgrade uh, other things um, in addition to electronic health records uh, management for HHS. Upgrades to our Executive Office of Public Safety and Security to make sure we are better connected, our data systems, we know how important that is in an age of, of cybersecurity threats. Uh, funding to develop a modern integrated data storage system uh, for our uh, education department, and $10 million to launch what we call a, a digital roadmap, um, which will ultimately be there to provide a better user, uh, an actual people experience intersecting with anything online with state government, right? So that's going to be uh, something we're, we're really interested in. Uh, each of every one of these investments is focused on strengthening opportunity, quality of life, and equity in our state. Now, when it comes to housing, I think we're really taking things to a new level, uh, which is only right because our needs have never been greater. So this represents historic levels of funding. Uh, we're being creative in how this, this funding is working or will work to produce and preserve the greatest number of affordable homes. In our operating budget, uh, which is separate from this capital investment plan, we have proposed, proposed already significant relief measures for both renters and seniors and expanded help for first-time home buyers. We are proposing investment in $800 million in federal ARPA uh, funds into housing access and affordable housing production. Our capital plan invests over $1.5 billion over five years to help finance the construction of new affordable homes all across the state, $1.5 billion. Um, we also are creating a new program called Housing Works. This is important. This is new today. What it is is something that's based on the mass works model for those of you in local government. The idea is let's, let's build an infrastructure that helps us as a state better partner directly with cities and towns. Um, also, uh, it's um, it going to be housed in uh, Secretary Augustus's shop. It's going to have an initial investment of $97 million, and it's going to leverage existing programs and an infusion of new funding to create new flexible tools for developing affordable housing, preserving and rehabilitating existing stock. Uh, we estimate, uh, well, we, we, have, we have big ambitions for what we want this to generate and do. Um, in addition to this, our capital plan includes $120 million per year to preserve the state's existing public housing stock. You know, it's over 40, nearly 50,000 units, and we've got to get those units livable, habitable, right? And we've got to do that ASAP. Uh, the bottom line, though, is that uh, the housing shortage, we know, affects our ability to grow and to thrive as a state. I don't want to see people leaving Massachusetts because they can't afford to live here. I want them being... I want them able to, to live here, to grow families here, to grow old here, right? And I want people from other states to come here to Massachusetts because, you know, we're a place that makes sure you'll have access to health care. We protect people's civil rights. We protect voting rights. We do a lot of things really, really exceptionally well. But we've got to work to make it affordable, and housing is absolutely uh, central to that. Um, and I want to... Um, say also that, you know, Elisa and, and the team at Housing Assistance who serve thousands of families across the Cape, uh, that also includes hundreds of children, hundreds of children, and that is profoundly poignant for me. Some of the children even contribute art uh, depicted behind me that reflects what they envision home to be, and I want to thank Sherry Ann for her uh, bringing the kids together to, to, to do that. Um, what, the median sales price right now of a home here is $760,000? Unbelievable. Um, Greater Boston's about $900,000. Um, and, you know, people who are uh, already housing insecure, uh, I mean, they, they literally need a lifeline. And so 
that's what we're really focused on, uh, taking this on head on. Um, there were other things that I was going to mention about the capital plan, which read our press release, but, you know, basically um, more money and support for economic development, our one-stop program, which we know is really important to a lot of cities and towns, $1.2 billion in investment there, um, $80 million for innovation, life sciences, advanced manufacturing, which we're looking to grow across the state, uh, $19 million for MassWorks, as I mentioned before, is an important program. Um, Cape Cod Bridges, you know I've been leaning hard into this, and I know how important it is. So, you know, I've committed up to $700 million towards the bridges, um, and we are working hard closely with the Biden administration and the dele federal delegation on this. The capital investment plan includes an initial $260 million uh, towards, towards replacement. Um, for another uh, part of the state, but important nonetheless, in Springfield, the courthouse out there, we know our halls of justice need, need upgrades and uh, construction in our, in our veterans' homes. And we've got a lot of veterans uh, on the Cape. We need to take care of veterans all over the state. We've got local transportation programs, $200 million for Chapter 90 funding for our local roads and bridges, which need help everywhere. Uh, $134 million in library construction. I'm particularly passionate about that. Massachusetts is home not only of the first public park and public school, but also public library. And we want to make sure that libraries uh, are, um, are supported. $50 million in cultural facilities funds. This is important. I know so many of you understand how important arts and culture are to the fabric of community uh, that's so represented throughout the Cape uh, and the islands. It's also an important economic driver. We've got a lot of people here who are in the creative economy. We want to support them. So those are just some other highlights. But uh, let me turn now to uh, Secretary Ed Augustus, uh, who I'm just so, so happy to, to have on the team. And uh, he has rolled up his sleeves and has dug right in and uh, is leading, working with all of you, leading the charge on housing production in our state. Ed. Thank you. Well, thank you, Governor, and thank you again for the honor uh, of taking on this important task uh, on behalf of your administration uh, and working with you and the Lieutenant Governor and the entire Cabinet to move uh, the housing goals forward. I'm thrilled to be here uh, with all of you. Uh, and Alyssa uh, to be with you again. Alyssa was on the working group that helped recommend the creation of the Secretariat to really have somebody focused on housing production and the housing needs of Massachusetts. So I want to thank you for your leadership. Uh, uh, I'm thrilled really to be here today uh, to talk about the important investments in housing today's uh, announcement represents. We know the statistics. There are fewer homes available for sale today than practically ever before. The year-round rental market on the Cape is completely frozen. This capital investment plan is an opportunity to match our words with action. And as the governor has already highlighted, housing is at the top of the list. It's clear we need more tools in our toolbox to spur housing development, and I'm thrilled that within the new Housing Works program, we include 25 million additional dollars of new funding to support housing infrastructure. This additional funding will augment the amazing work that's already been done by the MassWorks program. I can tell you, as City Manager of Worcester, I used the MassWorks program multiple times to create housing development as well as commercial uh, and job creation projects within the city of Worcester. Throughout the Commonwealth, we know that there are countless opportunities where housing, where public infrastructure improvements can unlock new housing, and we're eager to proactively partner with cities and towns to capitalize on that potential. I literally was uh, meeting yesterday with a developer who had a 400 unit project. And the one thing they were asking for from the Commonwealth is public infrastructure improvements to unlock those 400 units. And we now have a new tool in the toolbox to do that. Uh, the new Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities is going, to is going to be focused on getting projects, more projects in more communities to a resounding yes on housing production. We're going to do this by continuing to invest in resources 
uh, to fund affordable housing, transform more state-owned parcels into housing, invest in technical assistance so our communities can get the help they need to make housing a priority at the local level and leverage our existing housing assets. The capital plan overall includes, as the governor mentioned, $120 million to invest in our critical state-owned public housing and $90 million to help us rehabilitate existing affordable housing and address distressed properties in our gateway cities and beyond. Keeping our existing housing stock is, vital, is a vital part of the equation, and our state-aided public housing portfolio is another unique thing about Massachusetts. We are the only state with such a robust portfolio, and our team understands both the importance of this housing for our lowest income neighbors and many vulnerable seniors, but it's also an opportunity for us to further use the extensive footprint to grow our housing portfolio. In Chelsea and Somerville, we are witnessing creative partnerships to bring more housing to these communities, and we've supported similar transformational projects in in federally owned public housing in Boston and Cambridge. Just last week, I had the opportunity to join the Newton Housing Authority to celebrate 55 new affordable senior units built on land owned by the Newton Housing Authority. We have more than 230 housing authorities across Massachusetts and an incredibly talented ecosystem of affordable housing developers. There are many, many more opportunities for us to pursue. Today's numbers are big more than $1.55 billion over the next five years, but we also have a big challenge ahead of us. I want to thank the governor and the lieutenant governor, Secretary Gorkowitz and his team, and everybody who put this great capital investment plan together and giving us additional tools to get the job done on the housing front. Thank you. It's so incredible for us to be here today and to see all of my colleagues and friends. Um, thank you, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Secretary Augustus and Gorgowitz. It's an honor to host you here today. And on behalf of my colleagues, my board of directors, um, friends and colleagues, we have so many community leaders here, let me officially welcome you to Cape Cod. One of my colleagues who's worked here for over 20 years says, I think this is the first time we've hosted a governor. Wow. So this is a really big deal for us. And how awesome it is that you chose Cape Cod for this historic announcement. Because no one knows the intersection of climate and housing better than us here in this region. We know firsthand that housing projects are not possible without financial support from our towns and our government partners. From our experience, there are three building blocks to get, to get successful housing across the finish line, and that's courage, cash, and community. <laughs> Let's face it, nobody starts a complex construction project without a little bit of hubris and courage, right? <laughs> right? We know that the financial risk is huge and the opposition here is plenty. And so it's a long haul and a long battle. But we need the cash investments. We need the investors to make the numbers work because housing here is especially complex and especially expensive. And we need our community, we need you all to support housing, support our work, and embrace our vision of a thriving community where people of all ages and incomes can live and thrive. I say to anyone who will listen, and it bears repeating today, that the Cape and Islands are the canary in the coal mine. The rest of the state should take notice that what's happening here can happen anywhere, right? We need more housing inventory, and we need to diversify our housing stock. The Cape's GDP is declining. The cost of goods and services is escalating. Households making $100,000 a year have to leave our region because they cannot find suitable, attainable housing. And right now, to the governor's point, 
In order to buy a house here, you have to be making over $200,000 a year. That's crazy. Our zoning and our lack of wastewater infrastructure render new apartments dead on arrival. I know we can do better. And I stand here before you, before a display of drawings drawn by 100 Cape Cod children who show us what home really means. We see representations ranging from the literal to the figurative. Some illustrate their floor plans, very cute, that's probably what I would have done, right? Here's my bedroom, here's my bed, here's my desk, <laughs> right? To the, to, the, to the interpretations of what a home feels like, the feeling of home, a place of safety, of love, of security, a place to grow and play, a place for families to make memories, and these drawings make us all smile and warm my heart, right? But the artwork reminds us of our common goal, the reason we advocate for housing, the reason we make these investments is to ensure that children have homes to go to school in or go to school from and to grow from, that parents have stable housing to go to work from, and that grandparents can age in place. This is what makes a house a home, this is what makes a neighborhood, a community, a neighborhood, right? The funding announced by our governor today allows for bold, courageous action throughout our state. So together we can build more housing for the children in our communities. So again, thank you, governor, and thank you, secretary, for your courage and your cash. <laughs> It'll push us forward so we can do great things. And now it's all up to us to go back to our communities and put this investment to good use. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lisa, for your work and, and also for your work um, helping co-chair our housing working group following the election, during the transition, so that we could be ready to roll with the things that we really wanted to, to implement. Um, and I just want to close out by, I know we're going to take a tour, and uh, I want a chance to talk to some more folks, but um, I really uh, want you to know, and, and, I, and I think you know this from the Lieutenant Governor, who has, who has been to the Cape several, several times, uh, we appreciate that the Cape and the islands, I'm going to hop over to, to one a little bit later, to talk about housing, food insecurity, right? You know, Cape and Islands, is as tough as things are around the state, I know they're even tougher on the Cape. And, you know, I know the number of people who are crossing the Sagamore and Bourne Bridge every day to come here because they can't afford to live here, even though they work here. And I know a lot of a lot of people who you know grew up as kids on the Cape who can't afford to be here. And I know what that means, you know, when you think about uh, looking after aging parents, when you think about you know trying to, 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 to build a career, to build a family, uh, and not have the support right around you of extended family. You know, I think about our businesses right now. I visited many over the last year here on the Cape that were really suffering because of lack of workforce. And I'm just here today to say that our team, this administration, uh, sees you, hears you, understands the problem. It is hard. It is complex. But, you know, that's why we're really leaning, in, leaning into and, and asking for true partnership. We're going to have to do things differently. We're going to have to do things differently. And every community in this state needs to step up and see that our... because our destiny as a commonwealth is truly tied to one another. And it doesn't get more fundamental than making sure that people have safe housing, that they're actually housed, that they actually have a home. And so today is a start, uh, and we look forward to working with our legislative colleagues and community leaders um, and also with developers. We have to find ways to make the math work. We have to make it easier, and we have to make sure that we are, uh, that we are growing housing 
just in exponential ways around this state. I think we can do it, but it really takes a, a kind of, you know, uh, uh, a mentality that this is something we're going to do and get after. And, you know, there were times in our country's history where we came together and we got after it. I mean, you think about, you know, so many things, whether it was the Marshall Plan or the Works Progress Administration or, you know, think about what we've been able to do when people rode in the same direction. And that's what I'm calling on people to do across the Commonwealth, and it starts with housing. Thank you so much.